Hello again everyone, in this technical analysis of the stock market video, I call it all greed and no fear. And we're gonna talk about the CNN Greed and Fear Index and look at three of its key components. There are seven components to that index. We're gonna see where it's at and what it's been doing and take a look at these three components. And then we're gonna take a look at the NASDAQ composite and see what the price action is telling us. Okay, let's start off with that Fear and Greed Index. Here it is. This was updated as of Friday at the end of uh, the trading day. We, we closed early on Friday, half day session, uh, but it, the reading was 92. It was up one point from the reading uh, on Wednesday. And you could see where it was a week ago, quite a bit lower. And then a month ago, it was down into the fear category. So this does bounce around. There are seven components to it. Let's take a look at the track record for the last two years for this though and uh, see how that looks. So you can see how it's up, down, up and down, but at the, at the end of 2019 in here, you know, we had a little bit of a peak and then it sold off, it came in as we were approaching 2020, we were up at this same level where we are right now, very close to it. And then we punched higher, got more extreme as we got into the beginning of 2020. And then we started to slowly chop lower, lower but if you remember, the market didn't peak on January 1st. The market peaked around the middle of January, sold off a little bit, then came back and punched higher into February, then sold off. So what is this telling us? This is giving us the background, okay? This is giving us the sentiment. This is what's happening in terms of the overall market sentiment. It's not a price action indicator. It's not gonna tell you timing but it is gonna give you kind of the overall background that's gonna you know, help you decide, okay, what should I be on the lookout for? So here's one of the components, the VIX. All right, so the VIX has, uh, we thought was exploding a couple of times. Well, it actually did explode back here at the beginning of September. And then at the end of October, we thought, okay, here we go, breaking some uh, longer term trend lines in here. And then we got, it was a fake out, it failed basically. And then as we got into the November election, they, they sold the VIX off because all of a sudden there was a little more certainty, a little more understanding of what was going on in terms of the election, what was going on in the marketplace. And you could see how the VIX continued to decline below the 10 day moving average. And Friday for the first time, we got, we, we traded slightly below the 20 level, which is kind of considered to be a level where it's elevated. And uh, you know the market participants look at it and say, well, it's above 20, the VIX is high, or it's below 20, the VIX is low. And so this is the first time since February 21st that it actually broke below the 20 level. So we'll see what kind of continuation, do we get a close? It didn't close there, it closed at 20.84. We'll see what happens this coming week. All right, that's the VIX. Now I've talked about the put to call ratio numerous times. So 41 on Friday, the 10 day moving average is 0.43. But the thing I wanna mention here is look at these extreme readings in the 30s. Okay, I color them purple. This is the one day reading column. This is the 10 day reading column. So when we, I get one day readings, I, I haven't had any 10 day readings in the 30s, at least not yet. When I, cut, when I get them in the 30s, I color them purple. We've had 10 of them since June 8th. 10 readings in the 30s since June 8th. There were no, nothing like that at the top back up in January and February. And there've been only six times in the previous 14 years where I had a reading in the 30s. And so in that previous 14 year period, there were only six times I had these readings. We've had 10 just in the last, what, five months? It's pretty incredible, the bullish extreme that we're seeing right now. Okay, that's the put to call ratio. The summation index is another key component in here. Here's the NASDAQ summation index. This, is, this comes from the McClellan uh, data, the McClellan oscillators. And it really, it takes into consideration, you know, advancing and declining volume, et cetera. This is the zero line. 
When you break below zero, you're in serious sell-off mode, just like what happened back here when it went negative on March 3rd. And, uh, you know, like you can see, March 2nd, it was positive still, slightly. March 3rd uh, went negative, and when we got the extreme sell-off. Same thing happened back over here in the fall of 2018. We got really close here on uh, in September, the end of September, thought we were going to get a breakdown. But then all of a sudden it turned and started punching higher. And then look how we've been climbing recently. So we're not getting any breakdown in this indicator at all yet. Now we're getting up here and we're getting elevated. The other thing I'll tell you about this indicator, and I know I've talked about this a couple of times before, is sometimes you get divergence in here. Like look at the reading right here in January and then the reading in February when the market went to a higher high, but the index did not. Same thing happened back in 2019. It's happened before. And, uh, and so that's another thing we, we keep an eye out for. But right now, we're not getting the breakdown in the summation index. So those three indicators, the, the VIX, the put to call, summation index, those are three of seven that go into that fear and greed index that give us this reading that CNN uh, creates here for a 92 reading right now. So that's the background that we've got going on. Let's take a look at the actual price action. Here's what's happening with the NASDAQ composite. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay, it was up 111.45 on Friday. This is my moving average view, uh, and it's up above the Keltner channels. These dotted lines are the Keltner channels that I keep on my price on all my price charts. And uh, we, on, on Wednesday and on Friday, we had new all-time closing highs on the NASDAQ composite. And uh, if you take a look at the weekly chart over here, you can see it also, because, you know, of course, if it did it on the daily, it's going to do it on the weekly. But this is how it looked, up 350.88 for the week. So it's pretty solid continued push in here. I like the way this week... It finally got above that November 9th high, okay? That was that one day, that first day when we had uh, really good news on the vaccine. I think that might have been the Pfizer uh, vaccine, and then it sold off. And, but the other thing that just happened is we got above that September 2nd high over here. So we started to punch above that a little bit. I don't think we closed above it on, on Wednesday, but we did definitely on Friday. And if we look at the Elliott Wave picture, Here's why things happening. So, yeah, we're in extreme sentiment. We know the uh, the fear and greed uh, index. We're extreme greed right now, and I, we're in the final stages, I believe. But what do I mean by that? I mean that I'm in the. I think we're in the fifth intermediate wave of the push. You know, coming off that uh, uh, low, that uh, March uh, 2020 low, and within this fifth intermediate wave. I'm looking for five uh, minor waves. And I think we're in the third minor wave. And within that third minor wave, I'm looking for five uh, waves also. And I think we're in the third wave there. And so this would be my initial target. I'm looking for where three would equal one. That would be my first minimum that I'd be looking for. We're not even quite there yet. So I'm looking for the NASDAQ to continue pushing here uh, at least over the next week or so, we'll see where we go. We see how the, the uh, waves unfold as we continue to push higher. Okay, if you felt like the video was helpful, give it the thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber to the channel, hit that little subscriber button. And if you'd like more of this kind of information, head on over to joehenches.net, check out the website, and check out the membership. All right, everyone, have a great rest of the weekend, and uh, be safe. We'll talk to you on the next video.